Next thing I'm going to do is sand this down a bit. I'm going to go shape this off better. So see how this hole is a little bit low? I'm going to trim a little off the top edge there so that's more even. Trim this nub right here and then flatten the tail right there as well because you can see it's not straight. The other part of this too, I'm going to all these edges here on the side. See how it's all blocky still? These edges are on the side. I'm going to cut these at angles with the with the belt sander here and um, make them more round. That way we can start getting our actual shape. And that'll save us time later so we don't have to do it uh, manually by hand. But the uh, little sander that I use right here is three fourths of an inch. It works perfectly for me. Even for uh, shaping the pick, um, it works pretty well actually. I um, got it on Amazon, pretty cheap, but um, uh, the sander works really well. So I'm gonna go do that, shape it up, and I will be right back. This part really depends on what kind of finished look you're going for. So if you're not wanting like really blocky sides, just straight edge corners, you know, just more square edges, you want it more round like this, you know, nice and smooth and round. You take a piece of sandpaper, cut it in strips, and you just bend it over and do this. This will help you get a little bit even on it. Make sure you try to apply the same type of pressure on both sides. That way you don't get lopsided. But you can see how it's starting to smooth out there and get rounded. You can take that as far as you would like it. And as you can see, I go, I make them pretty round. And for these types of sides, where they're a little bit more detailed, like inside of the pick, more where the pick is going to be right here, that's a smaller area, you want to use smaller strips of sandpaper. That way they fit right there. Otherwise, these big strips, this will focus right there. There we go. Otherwise, these big strips, you see how it just goes all the way across that feature right there. So just use smaller strips right there. And that'll help you get rounded sides. A couple things you can do if you want to get your sides flat. So if you cut it off and your sides aren't very flat, you can take a metal file and just drag it down. Make sure you're only going the one direction. You don't use a file like a saw. You only go forward with the file, so you only bring the pick back that way, lift, and do it that way. Or sandpaper, just lay a piece flat on a piece of wood and sand it down to get it straight on both sides. We have a few different options for pins. The first ones, we are using uh, 332 of an inch for our pick, so we got those right in the middle here. You can also use 5 sixteenths or 5 sixty-fourth of an inch. You can also use 1 eighth of an inch. What I tried to do with these is get the same size, the same diameter that you would drill bits just so it makes things easier. Uh, another option is rivets. So these right here. Go zoom in on them. But these have uh, different colors in there, as you can see. And what those look like is like this. Whenever it's done, so you can see through it. You can see these rivets don't show up as much. I think I used this darker color here for it. I think brass would look nicer in it. But yeah, they're cool. And then you can also use, um, this is the only pick I have like this. I got this from... Matt's lock pick or lock pit, and um, you can use different types of plastic pins. You know, whatever material you want, but different colors right there. That's really cool. So you can do a whole bunch of different colors with that. Next, we want to put the pin holes in the metal and put the pins through the pick with the metal to make sure it all fits. And we want that fitting nice. The reason why we want that fitting nice now is once those pins in and everything are in there, it'll have our metal in a fixed position. That way we can be sure when we draw our design on that our design will go straight after those holes are in there. Sometimes if you draw your design on first 
and you grind it down first and then you put the holes on it, it might come out a little crooked. So you want to put the pinholes in there first. So let's line it up. For me, for this pick, it'll be right there. Go, I like it right there. And you can use a marker to, if it can reach, if it's thin enough, the marker will reach through and mark the metal. I'm not sure if this one is. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So what I'm gonna use is a diamond coated needle file. And these are really cheap on eBay. You can get a pack of these for like a few bucks. They're just really cheap and easy. They're, they're really useful too. So push down your pick to make sure it doesn't move. And let's make sure we're steady again. There we go, in the right position. Doesn't move. Then put our needle file in that hole and just circle it around to make sure that we're leaving a nice mark there. And then do the same thing on the other side here. I'm going to push down to make sure our metal doesn't move. And just try to mark a good mark there. All right, there we go. You can see our two marks right there. And that's where we'll put our holes. So, zoom out here. It's easier to see the marks if we mark them with a marker, so. Right there. There we go, and. It's right there. It's a little off, but I'll remember that. And then what I use is a metal punch. So here's the pack it comes with. It has a whole bunch of different sizes here for punching holes. And it is totally worth it. It's cheap and it's, it saves so much time. It's worth buying one. It really is. Um, if you don't have one, you don't want to use one, uh, drill with good drill bit. Make sure you use drill loop always. It makes a big difference. So we'll just line up our holes with our punch here. This one, I remember the back was off a little bit. Yep, I can see it. Right there. Oh, it's not on strong enough, so what gotta do is tighten this part up, raise it up a little bit. Right there, so there's less space for that. Let's try this again. So I'll do it this way because the easier to see the spot I gotta be on this angle. Look at it from all sides, make sure it's good, okay. There we go. Oh, perfect. All right, now let's do this hole. That's the most important part, just making sure it's lined up nicely. Because if it's not, it really just, you'll have to shave it down a little bit. That's all right, so we'll see. All right, before we put our pins in, one thing I realized, this was hard to put in for a reason because when we punched that hole a little bit on the other side got kind of pushed out the metal there a little bit it's a little bit deformed so what we can do is just take those whole parts and drag them along our file a couple times to place your finger there not the whole pick up here because that's where the, the nice part's going to be but right there I think we're good now. So what we'll want to do there we go. It's a nice good fit. Looks like the holes are there. And I also the pins I flattened those out on the metal file, smooth those out so they're easy to go through here. So it goes through the wood part alright. Get it through. go. There we go. 
pin number one. Tight fit. See pin number two fits. That'd be a miracle. See pin number two is almost there, but it's not quite. So pull that out. What I'm gonna do is see if this is about the perfect shape or perfect size there. And there's some metal in the way there. Let's try it now. What I can always do too is Yep, let's just take this off. Because it's it's really hard to get a perfect fit. Take your metal file or your punch again you know, and get a little bit bigger hole. It doesn't matter too much. I'm just gonna use this needle file here. This is a, uh, a diamond needle file. It's not a normal needle file, so you can use it like a saw. And then I'm just kind of going around the entire circle here. Just to make sure I'm kind of opening everything up there, and this should be good there. I'm gonna do it a little bit on this one too, just because it is a really tight fit. It doesn't have to be really hard. There we go. Smooth it out a little bit. There we go. Let's try it again. Feels like a better fit too. Got some of those rough edges out a little bit more there. There we go. First pin. And second pin. There we go. And now, you can see why you wanted to wait to draw it on. Now the pins are there, we know that it will be in this position. This will not move. So, we want to trace the metal. And with our marker there, this is again earlier why we didn't sand it down with a whole lot of different grits yet because a little bit of this marker might get on the wood and we'll have to sand that off. I'm doing all sides just in case. It's, it's worth doing because when you're grinding this, if you're using a bench grinder for any part of it, you're dipping it in water a lot. Here we go. So, have that all traced. Take our pins back out. There we are. So now we need to trace our um, pick design on, in which with that you can get your favorite pick, trace it on there, do your own custom design. Just you want to make sure that when you're doing it, you understand the orientation that the metal is in the pick when it's in there. That way you know your pick is going straight there. When you do the design, you want to leave a little bit of space between the end of the pick that uh, you put on there and the start of your handle. The reason being is you want very smooth or rounded edges on this. You don't want it to just run in here and have a corner right there. Corners make the pick uh, bend. It is a it is like a pinch point. Uh, so you want every little part of this to be as smooth as possible and round as possible. So what we're going to do is take this and just kind of smooth it down that way. And this one, we want it nice and round as well, so we're around to end right there. There we go. So our metal will be all the way through right here and up through there.